So, lady and gent, how are you guys doing? This is your boy Chris coming back with another reptile video to help you guys raise your reptile in the best condition. So today, what we are actually going to go over is I'm going to be going over the Max Snow lines. The reason why I decided to go over Max Snow is because I see a lot of people owning this Max Snow lines, and there are still a lot of people who doesn't know what actually happens when you pair Max Snow to Max Snow. So that is the main reason why I decided to record this video and give you guys a lot of details on what's gonna happen when you have Max snow in your projects so without further ado let's get started so before I go ahead and begin my PowerPoint there's going to be four different categories which I want to kind of go over with you guys and number one is going to be the history how it was actually found who found the morph that's the things that I'm going to go over the for history part and number two is going to be the genetic traits whether it's going to be incomplete dominant dominant or recessive or line breed which is also called as a polygenetics those are the things that I'm going to go over for the genetic traits part and third one is going to be the characteristic how it actually going to happen when you put max snow in your projects so there's going to be a couple of example photos which I'm going to be putting it in this PowerPoint so you guys can have a little bit of understanding on how actually going to happen when you have max snow in your project and lastly on the fourth I have probability example for you guys since it's going to be a incomplete dominance there's could be a super form for max snow so I'm going to give you all the percentages on what's gonna happen when you have a max snow pair with this normal Normal or max snow to max snow or super snow to super snow all of those details so when you watch this video until the end you pretty much mastered the max snow so hopefully you enjoy this video and let me know anything if you have any questions down in the comment so brief history the max snow was actually found by John and his wife Amy their last name is a Mac and that is the main reason why the max snow morph is called max snow um, long time ago when people started finding this more for leopard geckos they can actually get to put their own names or any other things that they want to put in for that more you can still do that nowadays but it is a little bit harder i guess um, because there are a lot of morph that has been established already but back in the time when they were just discovering new morph for leopard geckos they were just putting their last name that's something that happens a lot trampler is one of the other example that i can come up the guy who found the albino line for that also used his last name for that um, so they use their Mac as the name for the morph and this was found somewhere around 2000 to 2004 I didn't put it in the slide because the number didn't actually seem like it was accurate so I decided to take those out based on the information that I've collected from the online or book it looks like the final model for the max snow which was after done doing all the uh, test breeding was somewhere around 2004 so I think that is the dates for that but if you think this is wrong information let me know down in the comments I would love to know when is the real dates that was found with the max snow lines so after we went over the history now there are going to be the genetic traits I did told you guys this very beginning but super snow is one of the cool thing that happens with the max snow line because max snow is incomplete dominant the one cool thing is that you can do is when you pair max snow to max snow it becomes super snow and that is the main reason why a lot of people work with this max snow for their projects because you can actually create real good ones with the super snow um, I personally like super snow max snow lines so I have both of those in our projects and I can't wait how it's gonna turn out next year and I'll keep you guys updated on that and it's incomplete dominant and it can be a super form for example if you have super snow with the max snow together then it becomes 50% max snow and 50% super snow I will have all those informations at the end of the video so stay tuned so on the top of the slide that is going to be the max snow with it, which it has a little bit of yellowish color lavender color a little bit of dots and that is going to be the max snow and on the down below that picture is going to be the super snow the one thing that you have to be aware of is that super snow and super snow eclipse looks very similar except the leg part you see in the example photo that I have on my slide it also has a dot on its leg um, but if you have an eclipse genetics in there mixed in there with the super snow then those 
thought patterns will not show on the legs. That's something that I want you guys to keep in mind because it's a little bit of a small difference, but that small difference make a big, huge difference for your project. So be careful on that. Down photo is going to be the super snow. And for the next slide, I'm going to be giving you guys some of the photos on the characteristics part. And as you can see from that photo, yeah, that cute gecko is smiling at you and asking for super worms and you just need to give them when you see those face. The super snow actually have solid black color of its eye. So when you have a super snow, all of your super snow is going to be having those solid dark color. It's not from the eclipse. You can also have those dark colors, but that super dark colors actually comes from the super snow. Look at those face for a couple seconds and see that cutie face gecko from Morgan. I think that is the uh, breeder's name when I was looking for some of the photos. But yeah, I have a couple of them and they are super, super adorable. So the next part about one of the characteristics part for the snow is the pattern. As you can see from the example photo, it has a little bit of a high contrasting snow white body with the dark dash or it could be broken stripe patterns. I have Black Knight Snow had Eclipse right now in our rec system and one of the cool things that I found while I was working with this was that snow has very unique patterns. Some of them do have a stripe pattern and some of them don't have a stripe patterns. And I thought it was very cool in the very first time when I had those because I didn't have a lot of knowledge about the snow line. I thought it was just because their parents may have some kind of stripe genetic in them. It actually turned out that snow, it has a lot of those stripe characteristic on their back. So if you see any snow hatching that hatch out from the egg, that's probably the reason why they have a stripe or may not have a stripe, but you can really get a lot of good patterns on with that when you start line breeding those together. That is one of the example photo that I have for you guys. You can definitely tell those yellowish color are slightly fading away when you're comparing to the normal leopard gecko. Normal leopard gecko, they tend to have these strong yellow colors, but Max Snow, their yellow is a little bit lighter, I guess. Um, Super Snow don't really have any yellow color on its body. It's just going to be the max snow that will have a little bit of a yellow color on their its skin. So the next one that I want to kind of show you is the hatchling part. Um, reason why I decided to pull this up is because when I was breeding the Black Knight with the Galaxy, um, people were telling me that it is really hard to tell sometimes when you have a really good Black Knight snow. And the only way to tell is when they're baby. And as you can see, the normal one, they tend to have those yellow color on its body. But for snow, instead of yellow, they have a white color on its body. So when I first hatched out my first Black Knight snow, I was just majorly looking into that pattern or color because that's the only way I'm going to be able to tell. And as a result, all of my hats thing had this white color on its back, majorly because our female was a super snow. When you pair super snow with the normal leopard gecko, Black Knight is normal. I didn't have any hat for that. So it, it's pretty much normal because it's a line breed. Uh, polygenetic traits, but I had a black knight snow had a bunch of those white color on its back and it looked really really cool But as they get older those white colors starting to change a little bit of yellowish color uh, Which I showed you um, from my previous photo it becomes something like that But it's going to be darker because I have a black knight genetics in them So that is the way you can actually tell when they're hatching out if you have a hatching that yellowish color not the white then that's going to be the normal. And if you have a hatchling that has out with the white color on its body, then that means that hatchling has a snow genetics on them. This is really, really important information and I thought I would share this with you guys. So yeah, memorize it or just watch these pictures carefully and utilize that knowledge for your next project. Now for the next one, which this is one of the fun thing that I want to work with and I'm definitely working with this for this year too. Um, it's going to be the Pied Galaxy. As you can see, when you look at those gecko, they look like galaxy, but they seems like they have some skin dishes on them. I actually went over this on my Eclipse video, the video that I was reviewing for the Eclipse Morph. But basically what happened is when you have a galaxy, they tend to have all these dots on their face, body, 
tail except the leg. However, if you have a pie genetics in them, you can simply have these unpredictable patterns on its body. And this is really cool. And I have a mail that I received this year and I, I haven't shared with you guys yet, but I'll share you guys some day later in the future if you guys are interested. So those are the things that I like about the galaxy and snow lines. And that is the main reason why I'm still working with them until now. And another one, this one was pretty cool too. Um, if you have a super snow with the albino genetics together, what actually happened is as shown in the photo right there, the black color that you normally see with the galaxy or super snow will turn into brownish color. And that's when you can tell if your super snow has albino genetics in them. And you know, albino is a recessive, so it won't really show when it's hat. But if you have a just albino, then you will start seeing these brown color with those super snow. I don't know about the max snow one. There's other ways you can tell which by looking at their eyes, but super snow, I tend to find that because they have a solid black eye, you'll be able to tell by looking at their uh, pattern, the color of their patterns, which is brown instead of black. Those are pretty interesting too. I may work with them later in the future. I haven't started it, but we will see. That is one of the cool ones that I wanted to kind of show you guys when you put albino genetics with the super snow. And after that, this is the last example photos that I want to show, which is going to be the WI super snow eclipse. I honestly like this morph a lot. And I was actually thinking about getting this last year, but I decided to not have them anymore majorly because after i spoke with the breeders who work with the galaxy or white and yellow galaxy they were telling me that they have a really high infertility rate um, especially for females when you breathe with galaxy or wy galaxy it's really hard to produce the eggs from your female and a lot of people try doing it and the infertility rate was very high so it's hard to produce the WY Galaxy. The reason why I love this morph and why I was trying to get this morph was because when you look at those example photos, both of the pictures that you see in the slide are actually going to be WY Galaxy. And what WY actually does to the Galaxy genetic is that it kind of get rid of those dots on its skin. As you can see on the right, you see a very little bit of a spot, like how Pi, but Pi usually have unpredictable patterns, but this one is basically as a, gal a galaxy, but it has a less dots on its skin. So that's actually how it works. And the one that I wanted to get was a solid white color, white, white and yellow galaxy. Those seems really cool. So I wanted them, but because of the infertility rate, I decided to kind of give up on them and may keeping them later in the future if I find really good quality but I definitely think this morph is very, very interesting and very beautiful. It's just, I'm sad that I can't really produce a lot of babies with these morphs, but I definitely highly recommend it uh, for those who just want those cool morph for their leopard geckos as their pet. So for the last slide, here are some of the example for the probability side. And basically, if you want to produce 100% super snow, what you actually need to do is you just pair super snow to super snow and that will produce 100% super snow. And if you want to produce 50% super snow and 50% of snow then you just need to pair super snow with snow and for the third one if you want to pair super snow to normal then you'll basically have 100% snow that's what basically what happened when I paired black knight normal with galaxy because it's a super snow eclipse it becomes 100% snow I was able to tell right away as soon as they hatch out because everyone will, will be snow for 100% after the calculations so I knew it already but for those who may be working with like like snow with normal then there's chance where you might get normal so make sure you calculate that right and all of these examples will basically help you with that so take a screenshot of it or just write a note simple note on your notebook fourth example is going to be the snow to snow and this will create 25% normal 50% snow 25% super snow. So the project that I'm actually working this year with the Black Knight Snow Hat Eclipse is going to be all Black Knight Snow Hat Eclipse. So if I pair all of those together, those are the percentage basically um, that's gonna be happening for our next year. 
and hopefully I see a lot of super snow one because that is something that I want from the Black Knight snow. And for the last one, it's going to be snow to normal and this will create 50% snow and 50% normal. And in this case, just make sure you look into that color when they are hatching out because if they have a yellow color, then that means they're normal. And if they have a white color on its back, then they're snow. So that is the, one of the easiest way to tell and if you want to be a little bit, and if you aren't quite sure what your passing is going to be, I'll have a link down in the descriptions where you can just simply put your morph and it will automatically calculate it for you. However, be aware that these calculators are not 100% sure, so don't rely 100% on them. Just think about it as getting some example on how it's gonna turn out with your hat sense. And lastly, I think I went over this with the albino video, but don't mix with max snow to talk snow or gem snow. All the talk and gems are dominant. It's still really hard to tell. That's what I've heard from the breeders. It might be too late already, but let's not mix those together because if you do, it's going to be really, really hard to tell at that point. That's it for today. Hope you guys liked the video and got a value out of this video. And if you did, make sure you hit that like because like is actually going to help us reach out to more people and share this amazing information with a lot of breeders who are working with leopard geckos. And also, if you have a friend who's owning a leopard gecko or doing a project next year, share this video with them and and help them getting to know more about these snow lines. If you have any questions or if you want to watch some other videos um, that you want to ask us to create one for in our next video, then write a comment down below and I'll pretty much reply all the comments that you guys write to me. So go do that and I'll try to come up with another amazing video to help you guys raise your reptile in the best condition. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.